the star of the show. Um, but I think also it has to do with the kind of work, artwork that women make, which a lot of times I think um, is more nuanced and less sort of flashy, big statement, put a shark in a, you know, in a container. And um, so it's, <laughs> which isn't to say that women should start making big flashy work. It's that you need to, I think that we need to think very carefully about how we talk about our work and we need to really try to cultivate uh, our communities so that, because basically everything in the art world, or most everything in the art world, happens word of mouth. So you get a show because somebody knows someone who thinks that they'll, that person's going to like your work, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so cultivating those kinds of relationships so that other people understand what you're doing, I think, is really important um, to getting shown. I, I, is it, oh, oh, sorry. Well, Esther, we'll let as soon okay. as you finish your answer, as soon as you finish your answer, we'll break and not break that you leave the stage, but we'll start to take questions. Yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, I was just going to say something quickly about um, content, and that is uh, when I first began showing, I was show um, Bernie Toll, who was a very very good gallery in Boston, took me on, but he could never bring himself to give me a show because he thought my work was beautiful. And he liked to think of himself as edgy. And um, every time I would show him new work, he couldn't help himself by saying, oh, that's really beautiful. <laughs> but um, somehow beautiful had a connotation for him, and I think part of it was a feminine connotation that he just couldn't live with. And of course, I make my work because that's my work, and I will never the twain shall meet, I guess, with Bernie Toll. But he ended up retiring, and um, uh, I have to thank him for because he was responsible for giving me to the gallery where I'm now showing, and that was a very nice uh, thing for him to do. A woman gallery. Yes. <laughs> a really good gallerist. <laughs> um, so we're turning it over to... Audience questions. Um, I, I wanted to ask, based on your last response about um, the 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 women, female desire generally to play more supporting roles and starring roles, and um, that really really interests me. And then uh, I know that this is true of almost everyone's work, but I was wondering if some of you could speak to how that um, how that desire to play the supporting role. Can, can affect or come out through the subject matter of your work itself um, and, and how you or whether you are able to or desire to separate that role and, and the urge to, uh, to be a, a domesticator, a provider, a supporter um, to, from your practice. Well, just to be clear, I didn't say necessarily desiring to play a supporting role. I said socialized <laughs> to play a supporting Sorry, role. Sorry, it's been a few years. It, it, no, I know, but I, I mean, I'm not just saying that they're that different, actually, you know, in some cases. But, um, but do you guys have thoughts about the, her question in terms of studio practice? I, I don't think I quite get your question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I guess it's a little unclear. I'm asking, I guess it's, it's basically there's mm -hmm. two aspects of it. There's... There's, does that being being a being a woman, and being and having the the, the societal role, being in a societal role of being in a supporting role, does that come out through the subject matter of your work itself? Does that come out through the work itself, and not only in how you deal with mm -hmm. you, play, you, you know the business world? Does it come out in your art? I don't feel like it does for me personally. No, I don't feel like a woman, like when I'm in my studio. Somebody said that yesterday and I thought that was a really smart answer because it's true. Like, I feel like, in fact, I think about this a lot. I feel like in, I'm 40 and I feel like I've lived a man's life in a way. You know, just do what I want, when I want, spend my money how I want and not have to think about certain things. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I'm a woman like, I get my period every month, things like that. But um, it's like, 
except when in my internal world, I don't think about this. When I think about it is in the external world, when I have a conversation with someone, the examples I gave you, most of the time I feel pretty cool and fine and it's just every once in a while you're like, oh yeah, right, you know. So most of the time I feel like it's fine, this gender issue, yeah. Um, I'll just tell you a story and I've already mentioned that I think people associate my subject matter with the fact that I'm a woman. But when um, Bernie Toll was deciding whether or not to take me on, he said that he had another photographer who um, actually dealt with um, uh, sort of domestic subjects and uh, what would happen, and worked in a multi-panel format. And he said, well, what would happen if um, this photographer suddenly wanted to do flowers or greenhouses? And I said to him, well, well, what would happen if I suddenly wanted to do homoerotic art? <laughs> <laughs> and um, he, he, he ended up deciding to take me on. <laughs> More questions? For the first question, um, each of you responded that you hadn't started a family, and I was curious to know if that was um, I was curious to know if the decision not to start a family was based um, on other factors or as a concerted decision or a, a specific decision um, to pursue a career and not to start a family in order to further that career. Um, I've never wanted to have kids, fortunately. It hasn't been an issue. Um, I like my students. I can stay in touch with the ones I like, and I never have to see the ones I don't. <laughs> um, so it's really an ideal situation for me. <laughs> I, I, because I, didn't, I did not memorize the questions, I didn't know I was going first, I conveniently forgot to mention that I don't have children. Of course, it's probably obvious, because if I had children, I probably would have remembered to say so. Um, <laughs> Let's hope. Um, but um, I have to say that um, I actually, I'm, I joke that it's last call for me. Um, I could still have kids, and I actually think I'd like to. So um, for me, I think this issue is a very personal and timely issue. Um, I, I'll say a little more about that because I just think it's important. I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about children when I was coming out of Smith and going to graduate school, I was very like, I want to be a painter. I really want to do this. And I didn't believe that I could do both. And I'm not sure if I still can, but I'm going to fucking try, I think. <laughs> um, and I figure, I guess I don't care as much if it doesn't work out perfectly. I used to care a lot more that everything would work out just great. And I've gotten to a place in my career that I'm very happy. I'm not complacent, but I've gotten a lot of things that I've worked really hard for and I'm happy about it. And those things have been wonderful. Uh, like I got a Guggenheim and that was great. That's how I bought my house. And I realized when I got the Guggenheim that it was so exciting, but it didn't make me as a person. And that was really important. And so I think about the future and I think that having children is gonna possibly, let's hope, um, if I do, um, would possibly satisfy this other part of me as a woman and as a person that I think would be very important. And if I don't do that, I worry that I might regret it. So unfortunately, I didn't give this enough time, enough thought until maybe I was like 38. So, <laughs> and then I was single. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's all like super complicated and hard to figure out and we'll see what I do. Um, but I just want to make sure that for myself I make the right decision so that I can stop thinking about it. So I'll either have a kid and be happy or I won't have a kid and I'll be happy. Um, and I'm sure I'll be happy both ways. But it's important for me right now to make sure that I make the right decision for myself. And this is a big issue. And so my recommendation to young women is to not put off thinking about this. And I went through a lot of time where I was angry 
that this, this idea jokingly that I lived a man's life, well, I have to stop living the man's life right now and, and live the woman's life and think about these choices. And I was pissed that I had to interrupt my man's life <laughs> um, because they don't have to interrupt their man's life, mostly. So, yeah. uh, In my case, um, I think that we sort of let the moment go by. There were lots of personal reasons why that happened. Um, but I actually don't regret not having children. Uh, I, I knew I wanted a life in art. I was very fortunate because I met my husband in graduate school and we were very allied in our artistic sensibilities and our outlook for our life together in the things that we felt were important in um, very detail-oriented ways in the way we choose to live, the things we choose to look at every day, um, the way we um, uh, have our home life. And we often say to one another at this stage of our life of how would we ever have managed. I, of course, one does manage, but um, I don't think, at least right now, that uh, it's, it's a whole. Um, I always expected I would have children. As I said, it was a sort of passive, passive decision. And I do think that raising children is, is the great adventure of life. Um, and I have enjoyed watching other people do it. <laughs> <laughs> do, Tyga, do we have time for more questions? Okay. Um, Linda Mulek, up there. Hi, I have uh, a, a sort of a two-part question. Um, years ago, Carmen Lomas Garza was a visiting artist here, and um, she talked about how angry she was after she got out of art school and realized she didn't know anything about how to do her taxes, how to approach galleries, how to approach museums. And so sort of in retaliation, she said um, she started to do workshops for other artists so that they wouldn't have to start from scratch each time. And uh, would it have helped you um, to have had such a class here? Are there such classes anywhere? And then the second part of the question is, um, uh, do artists not n normally have contracts with their galleries? And if so, why aren't they enforceable? They're verbal contracts. Um, and it's one of the only uh, areas that has a verbal contract rather than a written one. So, so none of you have written contracts with galleries. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> I just want to say one thing about this gallery stuff because I feel like we've said a lot of negative things and I, um, I don't think all of the gallery experiences are negative. I've had a lot of really, really positive ones and I think the trick is to learn as quickly as you can, fake it till you make it, <laughs> and to really choose your associations carefully and to remember that you are in the power position to take your time and to pick those associations carefully. And if you feel comfortable with someone and they really like your work and you can connect with them and if you're lucky enough to meet that person, that is your dream situation and that it doesn't all have to be negative and difficult, but you do want to keep your, um, uh, I don't know, you wanna, you wanna be looking out, uh, but, uh, but I don't wanna paint, a, a, like I don't wanna make the art world look like a terrible, awful, a terrible place, because I love being an artist, and I love some of the connections I've made with people in the art world, curators, collectors, dealers, and those are some of the most valuable experiences I've had in my adult life. And some of them are crappy and some of them are good. It's just like everything in life. There's bad people and good people and sometimes you figure it out along the way. 